That video footage was taken in July 2007. The weight got harder after that. Before transplant, every part of my body was fighting to survive. I had trouble keeping food down because I coughed so hard, every day it induced vomiting. I spent hours doing inhaled medications and physical therapy. My reactions to the IV medications I received in hospital grew more complicated and severe each visit. I developed chronic back pain due to coughing and was constantly trying to stay off of painkillers. My kidneys temporarily shut down due to a strong dose of antibiotics. I got a GJ feeding tube inserted into my abdomen to help me gain weight by receiving nightly calorie-rich supplements. I was on oxygen 24-7. My call came on October 23rd, 2007. After months of not knowing, my life on pause, holding my breath, figuratively of course, my pager went off and I went into surgery. I realized this is an amazing gift that comes from a tragic situation for some other family. I am so grateful to my anonymous donor for allowing me to start living again. Recovery was a difficult but exciting process. For years, I had gone into the hospital not to get better, but just to try and not get worse. And here I was getting better every single day. They say you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Well, I had my life back and I can promise you, I knew it. In the last two years, I've returned to school, skated over Lake Louise, moved out with my two best friends, road trip to California, fallen in love, skipped through the streets of New York and danced at every opportunity. But transplant is not a cure for cystic fibrosis. Three weeks ago, I was diagnosed with chronic rejection. This means that despite my best efforts, my body is rejecting my new lungs. I have fallen from 69% lung capacity down to only 18%. I can no longer climb a set of stairs let alone dance to my heart's content. I would planned to give this speech in person, but right now, I just can't. I've had to take a step back. At the age of 25, I've had to move back in with my parents. This for me has been a lesson in patience, in humility, and in once again, learning to be dependent on other people. I depend on the doctors and nurses at the Vancouver General Hospital to monitor my symptoms, to be honest with me about the state of my health, try every new treatment, and to never, ever give up on me. I depend on my dad to put my arms around his shoulders and help take half my weight so that I can manage the stairs on my way to bed each night. I depend on my friends to still need my advice about their exotic travel plans, idiot bosses, and complicated love lives. My phone bill alone stands as an example as to how much my friends still need me. It's important to be needed and to be treated as normal. My friends often get disapproving looks from strangers when in public. They're used to standing and waiting while I cough and huff and puff and catch my breath. I swear they're not neglecting me. They just know a glass of water won't help clear my throat. I wouldn't be able to fight this without knowing that there are a lot of people who wouldn't be okay if I weren't here. I still remember the day that I got to come home from the hospital post-transplant and get rid of all the tubes in my room. Tubes hold you back. Feeding tubes, nebulizer tubes, home IV tubes, oxygen tubes. I think that's one of the things I'm most scared of. Needing tubes again. Feeling held back. The doctors are starting to discuss the possibility of a second transplant. It can be terrifying to think of but I don't want to be held back by plastic tubing anymore. I'm not sure yet if this next step is even going to be possible for me. There are a lot of variables and it's something I'm just beginning to work through. I'm not someone who sits still very well. I always have projects on the go. Growing up with CF has meant learning how to make the most of things. When I had to quit school and move into the hospital, I started a card making business on, out of my hospital room on Ward 8A. When I had trouble relating to people my age, I reached into the online CF community and found others who were waiting just like me. When I wasn't stable enough to return to work, I started a donated art supply program for patients still stuck on the CF ward. And now that I can't travel to Toronto, you get to meet the virtual video me, the Ava avatar. It is this me that over 3,000 people have met 
through the documentary film 65 Red Roses. The film won the runner-up Audience Choice Award here in Toronto at Hot Dogs Film Festival and will be airing for anyone who missed it on CBC's The Passionate Eye on November 16th. To keep track of the film and to find out more about organ donation all across Canada, check www.65redroses.com. My latest projects have been helping to promote this film, raising awareness about cystic fibrosis and organ donation. In preparing this speech, I've had to look inside myself and figure out what CF and transplant really mean to me. Cystic fibrosis means drowning on the inside. It means learning how to access my own med port at age 13. It means closer family bonds as everyone pulls together to get through the tough times. It means making jokes about beating your children and salty girls tasting better. It means living my life not for the number of breaths I take, but for the number of moments that take my breath away. And what transplant really means to me is hope. Even if it doesn't happen, even if it had never happened the first time, living with hope is what allows me to keep trying. And my greatest source of hope, the one thing that I believe in more than anything else, is that one day, very soon, no one will have to go through what I have. No one else will be held back by tubes. I hope for a cure for cystic fibrosis. I spoke earlier about the people I depend on. There's another group of very important people who I depend on the most. The researchers who constantly discover new information, new treatments that have kept me alive. The people who work at the Canadian Cystic Fibrosis Foundation who keep patients informed and raise funds for this research. Most importantly, the generous donors such as you who allow this work to continue. Every dollar raised makes a difference in the lives of people like me who live with cystic fibrosis. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. And let's continue to work together so that in my lifetime, CF stands for Cure Found.